Due to the nature of our program, we'll have our announcements first this morning. The barristers will have their first meeting tonight, September 13, at 6.30 in the American Studies Auditorium. Don't forget that uh, today is Harding Day at both of the Pizza Huts. Faculty and staff will be working, <laughs> working at both Pizza Huts from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. tonight. They're hoping that uh, they'll have a contribution of $3,500 to Harding. And we're hoping for that, too. That'd help a great deal. So please go to the Pizza Hut today and eat. You're helping yourselves. This is from Dr. Carr. From Ava Conley, do you speak Spanish? Would you like to put that Spanish to work for the Lord? Students interested in a Spanish-speaking campaign this summer to Caracas, Venezuela, are asked to meet in GB Room 111, Wednesday, September 14, at 8.30 p.m. This morning, after our devotional, we will have a film on world evangelism from the World Evangelism Forum. Number 166. 166. So begins another chapel period at Harding. A young, energetic student body gathers to share announcements of common interest and unite in a quiet devotion to their God. Christian life is stressed, reads a line from the college's alma mater, and chapel is an outreach to the students for this very purpose. Although chapel attendance is mandatory, students generally find the 30-minute period to be an uplifting experience. The planned programs are designed to stimulate religious, intellectual, and social development. One recent guest was well-known evangelist and Harding faculty member, Dr. Jimmy Allen. Where will you be 20 years from today? Obviously, you will be where your decisions take you. Are you thinking in terms only of a good marriage or the pursuit of a successful career or perhaps ful fulfilling all of your life in some type of entertainment? A long time ago, the wise man Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, and he pointed out that he attempted to find happiness and fulfillment in the works of his hands, in his scholarship, in sexual immorality, and in pleasure. And of each of those items, he said, vanity of vanities, and that it was a striving after the wind. And he came down to the twelfth chapter of Ecclesiastes and said that our primary responsibility is to fear God and keep his commandments. This really is the whole duty of man. And there are a million times, a million testimonies which have been given by people who have lived since Solomon's day to verify that he is correct. Where will you be 20 years from today? You're now dreaming dreams, and I hope you're dreaming dreams for the Lord Jesus Christ, and I hope by his grace you will be able to fulfill those dreams. Unfortunately, however, an assembly of the complete student body is not possible in the main auditorium. Spaciously designed for the 600 students who first met in the new facility in 1952, the auditorium now bulges beyond capacity daily as nearly 3,000 students and faculty members crowd into chapel in two shifts. Seats have been placed in each aisle and in the front and back of the auditorium, bringing the capacity to about 1,450. Yet standing room only describes the available seating capacity for campus guests. The solution? Ever since the auditorium became too small to house the entire student body in the early 60s, the college's board and administration have dreamed of a new facility to handle the increased student load, but priorities of new classrooms and dormitories were more needed. Since the decade of development began in 1965, millions of dollars worth of desperately needed facilities have been built, offering today's Harding student excellent housing and academic facilities. The final structure envisioned and dreamed of in the decade of development 
is slated to begin construction in the spring of 1978 at a cost of more than $2.6 million. Honoring the President Emeritus of Harding, the building will be named the George S. Benson Auditorium. It is only fitting that this building be a tribute to a man who devoted 29 years as President of Harding and who believes strongly that the future of tomorrow's church depends on the strength of today's Christian youth. Though I near the twilight hours, for me the land is bright. I see hope in the faces of our young men and young women at Harding College. And that hope in their eyes is worth the struggle of a lifetime. Sing the 